Hi, my name is James Tang, and I would add tamarinds to the immigrant jam. M to the G. We are back. We are back, people. Yes, we are back with a brand new episode of Immigrant Jam, the podcast. I'm your host, Lucy Pohl. This last week has been a little bit rough for me. I had the old COVID. Uh, remember that? <laughs> Not fun at all, but I am negative. I am a very positive person, but very negative COVID-wise <laughs> right now. Uh, so that's amazing because I'm in LA, which is exciting. I want to introduce you to my my guest today, an amazing actor, an amazing voice actor, an amazing online sensation. Yes, the internet, people. The internet, he's on it. Uh, the incredible Mr. James Tang. Thank James you, Tang, welcome you. to the podcast. Thank you for having me. How are you? I am good. You are such a ray of sunshine and light and positivity on the internet. Thank I feel you. like every time I see you pop up on my feed, it's something that's positive and happy and just makes me smile and laugh. And that's I try, your I try. that's but that is your thing, isn't it? Like I know that it, you know when Obviously, there's a lot of stuff happening in the world right now, mm. and you kind of like made it a point to be like, I'm gonna keep doing uh, positive things to make you happy and and um, spread positivity. Yeah, because um, I feel like as entertainers, you know, that is kind of at least for me, my like what I channel and what I want to put out there into the world is especially what I have control over is that. You know, especially now with with the way the algorithms work, and it's all everything's rage baiting and like mm -hmm. click baity. And Ooh, just, rage baiting! I yeah. didn't know that word. Yeah, wow. that's a whole thing where it's just mm. like people actively wow. just rage baiting, like post and talk about things that are very controversial and very angry, and and that I mean, it works, right? We're humans, and we kind of thrive in conflict, or like the conflict is like, I guess, a cognitive dissonance that we have to we have to like address in our brains. And so when that's happening, it gets rewarded because that's engagement, hmm. you know? And so companies are like, oh, people are, are talking about this. So let's let's send more to this person or whatever. And it mm -hmm. just creates this kind of like parabolic effect of, of just constant rage. Whereas like, and I think this is a biological thing, right? Where good things, once, once they, once we like, oh, if things are good, okay, cool. And then it becomes like a baseline for us. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I was talking to a friend yesterday about this, and it's like maybe it's because when things are good, that means we're alive and surviving. So we don't naturally think about those things or focus on those things. And it's only when things are bad we focus on them because that means we might die. And so we got to address this thing. And then once it's addressed, then it's like, okay, cool. Back to you know eating berries and hanging out, <laughs> doing cave paintings and stuff. Yeah, okay. that's my theory. I don't know how true hmm. it is, but. Yeah, interesting. I guess it's like kind of like, you know, salt and sugar and, and how like they give us spikes mm -hmm. because we weren't like, especially salt, like we needed it. And and so when we, because we couldn't find it that regularly, it would give us like little spikes in our brain to like reward us to be like, make sure you eat your salt, you know? Mm. But then now it's so readily available that we still get those spikes and we don't know the difference. So we just keep eating and eating. But I read that on your website, mm -hmm. right? You say, and I've never heard this and that was so exciting because I do this podcast and I talk to so many like immigrant, first generation immigrant um, kids or, you know, people that grew up with immigrant parents or immigrants themselves. And I've never heard this term. You call yourself a TCK. Mm -hmm. Uh, a third culture kid, yeah. which you describe as you say, um, TCK stands for third culture kid, which means I don't fully identify with my parents' cultures or the culture of the country I grew up in, but rather a third culture that sort of exists between. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. So tell us your background a little bit. You grew up in Thailand. Yes. So I was born in the States, but pretty much there was a little back and forth, but like mid elementary school, moved back to Thailand, uh, going to international school. And so Thailand would be that like host country culture and America too. It's like these kind of two host countries, but mainly Thailand because I spent most of my time there. 
Um, and then my parents culturally are mainly Chinese because mm-hmm. technically they themselves are sort of third culture kids as well. But I would, I would just say... What like, does that mean, mainly Chinese? Because my mom is Chinese but born in Korea. Wow. Yeah. And so she grew up as like a Chinese Korean in that she spoke Korean, but then she also spoke um, a dialect of, of Chinese uh, from the region that her parents had moved from. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there was like Chinese, like some Chinese families like within like Korea where she lived. So they would be friends there, but then be friends with like Korean people um, in, in school and stuff. Mm. And so kind of being that kind of like two feet between culture type right, thing. Right, right, right. Whereas like my dad is like a third generation, I think, born in Thailand, but like Chinese Thai. But he was born in Thailand. He was born in Thailand, wow. um, like ethnically mainly Chinese. There's like a bit of actual Thai in there too. And then I think he grew up, yeah, mainly between like I think Thailand and Laos. Mm-hmm. And then ended up like going to Japan, like in at some point, I think like at the end of high school or right after high school. Um, so there's this, yeah, these kind of mix of cultures. And then they ended up meeting in Taiwan. Whoa. So it's like all these mix of like kind of East and Southeast Asian cultures. So they themselves are, yeah, also kind of mixed up. Right. And then so it's, it became like, I guess, like a general vaguely Chinese-ish like culture as my parents' culture. So that's like that second culture. And then being in international schools, this kind of third culture that also takes right. elements from, oh, we're in Thailand. So there's things we know about Thailand and Thai culture and living there. And then also our parents you know, teaching us and influencing us and stuff. Right. But then because we're also with a bunch of international kids at international school with like a mainly American system. Right. It kind of melts into this third culture that's, yeah, separated, but still a combination of the other two. What do you say when people ask you where you're from? I usually say Thailand because I feel like I've spent probably most of my life there and feel like that generally still feels like home. You speak Thai? A little bit. Okay. Yeah. Because I mentioned my family is more Chinese culturally, like my Mandarin is stronger. Okay. So you grew up speaking mostly at home. English. English. Okay. Yeah. But a mix of like Mandarin and English and sometimes Thai. Okay. Yeah. It's so interesting. I think that like you're such an interesting and perfect example of how kind of silly nationalities and borders are in yeah, a way yeah. culture is real of mm-hmm. course as a kid did you feel good about uh being tck as you call it were you bothered by it were you like did people make fun of you or did you was it was everybody around you kind of everyone was this basically cross-cultural yeah. Yeah. because it was an american school i'm guessing yeah essentially yeah, yeah. like we didn't even know about this term until after we graduated. It's a term that, like, I think, like, a sociologist made up, like, okay. in the 70s or so. Okay. Because there's a book literally called Third Culture Kid that okay. kind of, like, reading through, <laughs> it, I was like, oh, oh, wow, okay. This really kind of, like, puts a label onto my identity. Yeah. Um, because even going to, like, when I went to college, I would, some of my closest friends ended up being also, like, international students right. and culture kids. Like, yeah. You know, I had a friend that was like um, an Irish woman that grew up in Zimbabwe. Yeah, wild. Um, she's another woman, Japanese Colombian that grew up in Costa Rica, or at least wow. bounced around like South America right. and stuff. Yeah, uh, my friend that I knew from that I knew had from from Thailand, uh, Filipina, but bounced around. Yeah, like you know, London and and Michigan, I think, ended up in, in Thailand. And so, yeah, just bouncing around wow. the world and stuff. Yeah. yeah. There's something about that experience that, like, if you didn't live it, it, it's very difficult to explain to other people. But then if you've lived it, it's just like, oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. We get it, you know. Kind what of do you thing. think that is, though? What is it that we get? It, it's There's something about it. Because I think with this book, too, it talks about the kind of universal universality of it. And I feel like, I guess once people have gone through enough cultures, like I guess two or three, mm-hmm. it just kind of like opens our minds up, I think, mm. to to like everything. Yeah. It, cause, right. Because in that book, there's people like from so many different countries that have had this experience, which I guess like three is kind of that sweet spot of opening those gates. Well, I remember my friend's mom who was like, James, come to the the like the Thai community graduation thing, and yeah. I was like, oh, but I'm not really Thai. She's like, your dad is, so come on. And I, was just like, I was like, ah, okay, 
okay, I guess I'm going uh, then, you know? She's like, good enough. You yeah. can come in. Yeah. But then, like, all the students there <laughs> were like. And it's $45. Right? Uh, <laughs> no, it's just like a se- specific, like, okay, we're graduating, but these are all the Thai kids. Because then after uh, Thailand, you lived in Australia, and I think I read Australia and Canada, yeah. right? Yeah. Before coming to LA, or? Yeah. So I went to school for, or went to school in Canada and Australia. Yeah, for acting? No, for, okay. it ended up being filmmaking. Okay. I went into, got into school in Canada, UBC, um, because I was like, didn't know what I was doing with my life. And I only applied to like four schools. Mm. And like, that was like the only one I got into. Were your parents cool with you going wanting to, to go into the arts? Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like we're kind of like an anti-stereotypical Asian family because generally... In what way? Well, generally it's not like the arts, like mm. Asian culture and Asian families. That doesn't really happen often. Right. You, know, you don't go into the arts. Uh, I think especially immigrant Asian families. Right. Um, but we're also kind of not really... We're immigrants, but not because we just bounce around everywhere. Yeah. Um, You're citizens of the world. Essentially, yeah. What do your parents do? My dad is like a serial entrepreneur. Oh, cool. Yeah. And my mom is basically like a homemaker and like the support system for us. Okay. And they're, but they're Amazing. also just bouncing around the world and stuff. Hmm. Um, really? Yeah. I think they're spies. <laughs> <laughs> they could be. They could be. <laughs> what does that mean, a serial entrepreneur? So like he has like, like different businesses. Yeah. And, he just, right. I think through life, it's just been like, all right, start this business. Cool. And then it works out, it does, or if it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, and then like chill for a bit and then move on to another business or whatever. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And so just like ventures, you know. Cool. And so I think his whole mentality about kind of, I guess, life and business is like, yeah, just make money however you can and enjoy life, you know. <laughs> so it's like, if it's art, <laughs> so it's just like So he has an OnlyFans now. <laughs> Check out James's dad's OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> private link, private link. Uh, wiki feet uh, he's um, huge on wiki yeah. feet <laughs> um, that's cool I like that that's great um, that's a cool like spirit to grow up around mm-hmm. I feel like right especially then as an artist because it feels like nothing is like too heavy like if something doesn't work you can move on and try something else like it feels like that's the example that Ish, he yeah. led by right well, it's interesting in that I put the pressure on myself right. through like weird notions of society, my own weird notions. Cause well, it's something like I, what? So like getting good grades. Yeah. That was never something they ever said to me. That's so funny. They're yeah. like, we don't care if you go to college. <laughs> and you're Not like. Not so much about the college. you did it yeah. to yourself. Well, That's like I'm so thinking funny. of high school where it's like there was, I think, this perception of being Asian and getting straight A's or something. That was kind of an underlying thing. Hmm. And so like when I wasn't doing well with my grades or something, I would kind of beat myself up. And I, I do remember one time my mom was just like, we just want you to be happy. And I was like, <laughs> no, no, that's not. Uh, you're like, um, you're not supposed to say that. You're supposed to say, if you don't get straight A's, you're grounded. Right. Like stuff like that. You grounded yeah. yourself. You grounded your parents no, for not ground- telling you. I actually grounded yeah, myself grounded. in elementary school because. James, what? Because I was like, I've never been grounded before. And my mom's like, okay. And I was like, I think I'm going to ground myself for a month. She's like, what? Okay. Human beings are insane. <laughs> it's insane how we always want the thing that we don't have. How was it? It was fine. I, I could do it. Yeah. I I think I've kind of always had really good self-control. So it was just like no video games for a month. So I was like, all right, I'll do something else. <laughs> oh, my God. What a freak <laughs> yeah. kid. What the hell? <laughs> You're like this like 10-year-old that's like talking to himself in the mirror. He's like, no video games for a month. You've been very bad because your parents aren't doing it. Meanwhile, your parents are playing video games downstairs i've never i was never grounded because i was a good kid like i was so, never really punished because i was a good kid i followed the rules and right. so i was like it was like i want to see what it's like and my mom's like all right sure do you still do that to yourself ground myself and like no i don't know kind of i guess beat yourself up that's like a form of beating yourself up isn't it uh, i don't know i th- or th- being hard on yourself i feel like i have been hard on myself for many many years yeah pretty much 
Yeah, pretty much my whole life. I'm trying to break you down, James. <laughs> I'm trying to make you cry, okay? <laughs> um, it's, I, but like, because I've been going, I've been receiving life coaching the past few months as well. Have and, you? Yeah. From who? I mean, um, no, you don't have to say the name, but like from a life coach? Yes, from a life okay. coach. Um, oh, that was the dumbest question I've ever <laughs> asked on a podcast. I've been receiving life co coaching. Really? From who? Yeah. From a life coach? <laughs> uh, you can call me Lucy. I'm in poll. I ask all the hard hitting <laughs> questions here. <laughs> yep, that's uh, me. Receiving life coach, actually, from a, from a, a seamstress. A homeless <laughs> person. Oh, yeah, there's this homeless guy at the end of my block. No, yeah, life coach that focuses on artists and stuff. But it was something, while, while going through that, it was like discovering that, like, I never, I guess I was hard on myself in a way that it, I wouldn't beat myself up about stuff necessarily, but I would always compare myself to, like, this future idealized version of myself that doesn't oh. exist. Really? Yeah. And meaning the future idealized version where you have tons of money and you're super, yeah, super famous yeah, and yeah, yeah. you have even bigger muscles because if you're not watching this on YouTube and just listening, you're missing out on the guns that James has brought today. <laughs> um, is that that's what you mean? Essentially, yeah. Like the success. You know? "Quote unquote more successful yeah. version of you yeah, on yeah, paper." Yeah. Yeah, 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 you know, which doesn't exist. It's on paper, right? And it's not even on paper; it's just in my brain, right? And right. so, like, comparing ourselves against that creates this sort of like, "But I'm not there yet." Kind of feel and vibe, right? You know? right and I think right. that's something that I kind of always had through my life, but it wasn't necessarily beating myself about it. But it was this kind of insidious, like, hmm. it's like a, it's like a, I guess a bucket with a hole in the bottom. Oh, nice. So like nice image. I love yeah, that. Yeah, it's just like it's always dripping out like the fullness. Yeah. And so it's like you always got to replenish, replenish. Right. Um, and so I guess that would be the realm of beating myself up. Why am I thinking of Matthew Perry's colostomy bag? <laughs> <laughs> when you said that, a bucket with a hole in oh, it no. that drips out. <laughs> Oh no! Oh my! Rest in peace. Rest, Rest in, in peace. peace. I didn't even know he had one. But. Oh, I thought I thought you were gonna say I didn't know, even know he died. No, no, I, I did know he passed. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you didn't know that he had a colostomy bag. Yeah. I did not. No, he had it for. It, oh, you, really? I thought everybody knew this. I um, honestly know, <clears throat> knew very little about Matthew Perry. I didn't know this either until. He died. Oh. I, I haven't been following the colon of Matthew Perry oh. for. <laughs> Follow along for more news about the colon of Matthew Perry here on Immigrant Jam Podcast. May he rest in peace. But it's crazy. I think, you know why also I think I went there? Because it's like, you know, people, especially in this town, aspire to that, right? Mm. To like Matthew Perry status of fame and success and fortune. And then the guy is literally like covered in his own feces, addicted mm. to drugs, mm. super unhappy, right? Right. And and poor guy, what a horrible story that guy had because he mm. seems like he was a good guy and trying mm. to, you know, live his life. But I think that that's, that's also such a crazy aspect of it that we compare ourselves to these people and we want fame or we want whatever you know success and um it's this abstract thing as you say mm. it's this thing that we don't even know what it is mm -hmm. what comes with it what it feels like and and also that it doesn't solve any of your problems obviously because right. you have to find it within yourself yeah. right is that yeah, what the yeah. life coach coach tells you because i'll i'll make you a better deal whatever you're paying <laughs> that <laughs> i'll take half Okay, okay. Because okay. I got some good advice <laughs> if you want it. <laughs> but do you think now, so now are you healed from that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's like, I don't know that it was, I guess it was like a tiny little micro cut or like that death by a thousand cuts, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, oh, identifying that and just not doing that anymore and just yeah. focusing on like a more productive habit for myself and how do you life. not do that though like so does that mean when the voice comes you go no be quiet you <laughs> there's i would say this I, I will shout out the book that they recommended okay. um in in the coaching is called the gap in the game the gap in the game the gap and the game and the game yeah okay. because that's essentially the the game. what i'm referencing is that like that gap is when we compare our current selves to that future self right 
and the gain is when we or not comp compare or measure but when the the gain is when we measure ourselves against our where we started hmm. so even if we take one step right you can see that you've taken a step yeah and really kind of being grateful for that and cherishing that and celebrating that right and because i think people at least i see on you know like little clips or on the internet or just like blogs or whatever it's like be grateful gratefulness is such a great practice and yeah. i was like okay cool yeah i'll try it once in a while and stuff but i didn't understand like why exactly it would be helpful and stuff and mm -hmm. what its use would be being you know very logical brain and stuff and then reading this book i was like oh it just lays everything out in such like a succinct simple way mm. that it's like you know being grateful for things like makes you feel like good and fulfilled and successful now so that you could still go for your goals but from a place of like abundance and wholeness mm. as opposed to like that like the need for fame because then I'll be happy or something, mm -hmm. you know. And then even if you get it, because that it's that constant f forward future comparison, then like the happiness dissipates and stuff. And people are always just clamoring and clamoring and clamoring for that. So how do you do that though? As because you can say, how do you how do you practice being grateful? Um, now I've started a new exercise where pretty much the end of the night, end of every day, I'll just write down three things that I feel successful about. Okay. And it's, it is, that also helped for me is like separating success as a feeling from goals mm -hmm. and being able to feel successful about things I could just do in my everyday life. So like little things like, oh, I washed the dishes today. Yeah. Or I learned something. Cool. Or I, I love got that. to spend time with my family. Mm -hmm. I get to spend time with a friend or a new friend or just, yeah, yeah like just growing anything that like it's just our own personal definition right and for me like these are the things I define as successful and just being able to do like three of those little things in a day yeah I could feel like like this was a great day this is a fulfilling day I think it's so important for people to listen to people like you talk about this type of stuff because how many um, followers do you have um, across the border yeah just say across the board across the board about a million right yeah. Okay, so people listening are probably don't have a million followers and they feel like, wow, if I had that, I would feel happy and successful and that guy is killing it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure you have this experience all the time. I have it too where you haven't seen a person in years and you bump into them and they're like, oh my God, you are killing it. I see your Instagram. I see your little, and you're like, oh my God, my life is falling apart. I hate right. myself. I woke up crying. I, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 and yeah. Um, it's so important though to hear for the people listening that people that seem successful online are just psychopaths no <laughs> no i'm kidding but uh you know like it doesn't stop like it doesn't matter mm -hmm. like you have five followers or you know you're not as successful as you think you should be in whatever area and then you feel that way and then you get you know you triple the followers and you do make steps and becoming more successful and you still feel like that so you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it doesn't matter the the numbers don't matter yeah. right like <clears throat> you always feel that way if you don't do that work that yeah. you're talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. within yourself where yeah. you're like i have to stop beating myself up or i have yeah. to find ways to you know redefine success because mm -hmm. i think it does come from the outside right it's mm -hmm. like this i mean meritocracy that we live in supposed meritocracy too yeah in that like True. It's everything is so, especially with social media and being in entertainment and stuff, everything is so visual and it's about marketing and pushing in your face. Like, hey, hey, I'm doing a thing. I'm doing a thing, you know? Yeah. And it's like this constant barrage of like, like you, it's so hard not to compare yourself when it's like, oh, I could see their numbers. This person has 31 million subscribers on something. Like, right. cool, great. And they feel the exact same way as you. Yeah. That's yeah. the crazy yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, Unless they've done the work. Yeah. Yeah. Or are just hiding high? it really well or high yeah <laughs> no, high don't life. be high just very no, high this don't. whole time <laughs> they're just Tony really Shaker high has, and yeah. that is the answer to everything yeah. friends take drugs uh in abundance <laughs> oh my god this is not medical <laughs> no, advice no <laughs> this um that's coming straight from the life coach so this is actually helping you the writing down of three things you feel successful <clears throat> about mm -hmm. it's funny how writing something down really 
uh, is a different experience than just having it in your head. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It is. It's I like always tell people act of it. it's a physical yeah. act, and then you put it down on paper, and it makes you reflect differently. It internalizes the thing. Mm -hmm. Like it's very, it's 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 a magical thing. Yeah. Writing something down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's even like I, you know, am like a little lazy and tech driven, so I'll like type things out. But mm -hmm. I feel like there is a difference between typing it and then yeah. physically writing it as well. That too. There's yeah. a difference between physically writing it, typing it, but just putting it down, mm -hmm. taking it out of your head yeah. and making it, putting Almost it into concrete. the yeah, yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah. There's a thing that's, yeah, there's something sure. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't <clears throat> like read horoscopes or anything like that, but. Um, but you live in LA. I don't. I live <laughs> in New York. What oh, are you talking about? But you're in LA. I don't live in this fucking shithole. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> This shithole country called LA. Um, can't you tell? I'm so New York. And yesterday, my friend uh, Tom Rhodes, who's a great comic, everybody should check him out, uh, read me this horoscope. It said, My job is to do shadow work, mm -hmm. to look and like celebrate your imperfections, basically. Mm -hmm your like inner demons without like trying to fix anything, mm -hmm. but just like observe mm -hmm. the shadows mm -hmm. within you. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. At least for me, it's, yeah, I don't feel that I have too many, I don't, I mean, actually, I don't really know the definition of shadow, but like off the top of my head, shadow, you know, being evil, cruel or whatever. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say I have that, but I do have this inner critic. Right, and that's a shadow. Yeah, and yeah. something I've been learning recently too about like inner critics is that we cannot get rid of them. Right, exactly. They're always gonna be there, but they actually are there for our safety. Mm. They are there to kind of bring us back to like some sort of safety measure that we think, or it thinks is like gonna help us survive. Because it's, you know, kind of rooted in like this kind of, you know, berry picking prehistoric kind of world. This is the second time you've brought up berries. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's hunter gatherer life, I guess. I don't know. That, that's all that... I know about it. You know, you, you <laughs> hunt, you hunt like a saber tooth tiger, and you pick berries. Like that's that was their life, I think. Yeah. Um, Are you a survivalist? No. Okay. Not really. But yeah. So this inner critic is like, it, it's it is there to try to help us, but then it overwhelms us sometimes because mm. it's it doesn't know the difference, you know, of, of you know life, society now versus like survival back in the day. But it's like, it is, yeah, like acknowledging it and mm. listening to it and hearing it and being like, okay, cool. Okay, I hear you. You're there. Thank you. And then like working almost together as a team to just to kind of like bring down like the, the flame that it, it's inflamed by, you know. Right. And also I think that's the other thing that you don't have to get rid of the demons. Mm. You just have to like – know that they're there it's yeah. like a mole or yeah. whatever you know you always have it but it doesn't define you yeah and yeah you have some demons yeah. that's a very immigrant mentality isn't it yeah. to be like okay just get on with it, it. Yeah. just fucking yeah. work what are you get doing yeah stop crying pick yourself up um james I always ask my guests if they grew up with any cool like sayings or proverbs or mm -hmm. idioms I found some from Thailand but you said you didn't really grow up Speaking to but maybe you know some of these. Mm -hmm. I thought they were funny. Mm -hmm. Better to grab feces than flatulence. Kam ki di kwa kam tot. <laughs> is that real? Tot right. is fried. Tot, I think, is, is fart. Ka tot is ka fried tot, tot. and tot is fart? There's it's, it's a tonal language, yeah. Right. So it's like, yeah. Ka so you're is, fucked as, 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 as a non-Thai. As a non like, yeah. You, you, you need to learn the tones if you need to get <laughs> yeah. around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Otherwise, you're like, let me get a yeah. farty wonton. And then this one is interesting. <clears throat> chicken sees snake's feet. Snake sees chicken's boobs. Hmm. I've never heard it, but also very Thai. I wouldn't say I grew up with this. This is something I actually really only heard my dad say like as an adult. Mm -hmm. We had started a kind of company together Okay. Uh, as a family. And so he he said, "Isn't this is a Chinese one?" Okay. It's uh, 船到桥头自然直, which translates to when the boat reaches the port, it'll naturally straighten. Oh, I love yeah. that. Which basically means like things will work out. Like don't worry about it. You know, it'll kind of things will work out. Yeah. Like things yeah. will work out. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. I love that. How do you say that? 
呃，船到桥头自然直。Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. Honestly, <laughs> James, we've come to the part of the podcast where I must、um, ask you to embark on the journey that is the poll questionnaire. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. James Tang of the United States of America, of Thailand, by way of China, Taiwan, Canada, Australia, Korea. I guess in a way. In a way. Um, and now LA. Are you truly ready to play the poll questionnaire? At this point, I don't know. All right. Well, that's good enough. If you were the president of the United States of America,、mm. what American food would you ban? Ban. Ban. I don't know that I would ban anything because I feel like that would be they would have a very very visceral reaction. Um, oh, okay. You're thinking of your populist.、Yeah. You're thinking of okay, okay. Like there would be people. But what about people's、it? health? What about I agree with Doritos, think, with, where they think, open like, the bag and put cheese in it. Right. I like if we look back. I think Michelle Obama tried to promote some healthiness, and、mm -hmm. there were straight up some people that like thought that was you know. So you care more that, about the reaction of the people than the actual health of the people. You know what? I guess if if it was really you know being a bit like you know what I'm gonna make the decision for you. Yeah, what would you、um, ban? Probably yeah, like processed corporate food. Ban all chips. Wow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's a huge yeah, one. Yeah. If you could add one face to Mount Rushmore, whose face would you add? Rosa Parks. Okay, no further questions needed. That makes sense. If You were casting a movie about the Statue of Liberty. Who would you cast as the Statue of Liberty? As the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Ooh. Danny DeVito. What? That's the best. <laughs> I love that, Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. That's awesome. Okay, I love that. I love Danny DeVito. <laughs> oh,、uh, amazing answer.、Um, what's the most Thai thing you've ever done? I feel like just like if we have like a Thai get together and we do like a Thai potluck and hang out with Thai friends.、Mm, just be, being Thai. Yeah, I、okay. guess like being Thai in LA and just hanging out and、okay. like putting on like like kind of Thai version of country music. Oh whoa! What's the Thai version of country music? What's like the most popular? There is a genre called luk tung. Luk tung. Yeah. Where, because there actually is literal country music Thai style, like、cool. West American country music, but like that's its own genre. What's the most Chinese thing you've ever done? Live probably the last fifteen years of my life focused only on money. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh my God! Really? Kind of. Is that yeah. true? Yeah, yeah. I、okay. feel like that's very Chinese. What's the most American thing you've ever done? I had a Luther burger once on July Fourth. What was, the hell is that? So it's two donuts as the buns of a burger. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Sweet donuts. They were Krispy Kreme sweet glazed donuts. Yeah,、uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God! And you want to ban chips? And、you、why know, is it called a Luther burger? Apparently, Luther Vandross ate these regularly. Oh, I thought like Martin Luther who changed、no. Christianity forever.、Uh, Martin Luther from <laughs> Europe. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That dude that, loved burgers loved, and donuts. Luther burgers. What a freak! <laughs>、uh, no, but apparently Luther Vandross. I, I think I looked it up. I like, Luther Vandross. Vandross. I don't know. How, I'm not sure. But、um, apparently he liked. That's、those. his legacy. <laughs> At least、that's、for food,、up. I guess. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> two. And does, did it have cheese? No, I think I just went with. All right, I'm going to try this. Two burgers, or yeah, I think it was like maybe two patties and two buns. You and made this yourself? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. We were barbecuing on our balcony, and someone brought Krispy Kreme donuts, and I was like, "I've heard of a Luther burger. I'm going to try it." It、wow. was July Fourth as well. You know? Wow, that's so, the most. That is the most American yeah, thing ever. Yeah, wow. Very, very American. Wow, <laughs> that's wild. Okay, insane. If you could deport one American person, who would you deport? Oh my, Elon Musk. Ooh. Because I think he's he's Canadian, South, but okay. And South African. Yeah, I mean, if, I we're looking for an American person, but we'll take it. You know that I、uh, went viral for trolling Elon Musk. Oh, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On his Thank now.、Uh, On、website. his website, yeah, yeah.、Nice. on his platform, now, yeah, whatever. Now platform. Last question, James. Do you know how I can meet David Hasselhoff? I think there's a secret、um, horn you have to blow. 
Um, okay. I, I feel like you have to go into. Are like, you telling me to give him a blowjob? No. <laughs> You're like, there's a secret horn you have to blow. Like a summoning horn. Namely, his penis. You have to blow his penis. I feel like you, there's probably like a specific club in the middle of Hollywood. <laughs> And there's a guy. You have to blow him, and then he'll take you to <laughs> David Hasselhoff. His name Hasselhoff. is horn. <laughs> I feel like it's like you go into a back Hello? room, and it's like, oh, yeah, you just blow into this horn. Uh, stop saying blow into this horn. But it's like a literal horn. It's like an instrument. It's you like have a to summoning... drink mm, Matthew kind of... Perry's Colossal. Oh, no. <laughs> I can't stop thinking oh, no. about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, okay, oh, so I have to blow someone in Hollywood. It's I get it. All right, horn. it's that old it's story. Story. Ah, I thought we hear the things we want to hear, you know, and so maybe that's the way. That's true. That's way. I, I haven't gotten any action in a while. You're right. That's true. Is there anybody out there that Needs I'll do it even if you don't blow. know David Hasselhoff at this point? <laughs> The Listen. Spider-Man on Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You may or may not know. <laughs> Thank you, James. Great advice. Um, I, I, the life coaching has really been paying off. You give great advice thank you. for people thank in you. need. I mean, honestly, um, no, seriously, James, thank you so much for being here. Uh, where can people find you online? For the three people that don't follow you in this world, um, that don't follow you already, uh, where can they find you? Um... My username on basically all the platforms I use is James the Tang. Um, I'm most active on TikTok, Instagram, uh, Twitch, a little bit of YouTube. I love that you're like, I'm most active, then you list all the platforms. <laughs> what, well, because I'm, like I'm, I'm not that active on LinkedIn. I mean, I'm working on it though. Um, that's the only one. <laughs> For non entertainment people, apparently that's like the place to be. Like LinkedIn? Keep, yeah. You can or as like, my mom says, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah. You can, you, like, there's like, People could go live on LinkedIn. Apparently, like that's stop. Thing. Yeah. My brain hurts. I, I don't want to know yeah. about this. Yeah, no. So I, 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 LinkedIn is like a its own rabbit hole. That as someone that's in entertainment, didn't even I didn't even know. Right. Didn't even know. So you're most yeah. active on not LinkedIn, TikTok, TikTok Instagram, Instagram, Twitch, Twitter, and not Twitter. Not, not Twitter. Twitter. I have jumped ship off Twitter. Okay. Um, I'm trying to use threads and make it a thing I don't know um, amazing thank you so much for being here people please go and check out James Tang James the Tang online he's the best uh, obviously <clears throat> if you don't already know that and thank you so much for listening. Thank you to our patrons. Oh my goodness. You, Lumi, Joe, JT, Mike, um, of course, Douchebag Steve. Douchebag uh, there's Steve. a few new ones. Thank you for joining new people. Thanks, and new sorry, people. yeah, if I forgot anybody. Follow James, follow no one else. That's Lucy, stalking. Follow, Stop that. Somehow um, people listen to this and not follow her. <laughs> follow her. <laughs> and uh, thank you to Jared, producer you, Jared. extraordinaire here at Melrose Podcast today from L.A. That's right. We love you. Go away. Do something useful. Bye. <laughs>